will uh, we will start with the end stage renal disease uh, first, which is the outcome uh, for this study. And I want to share you share with you this document that I created that sort of helped me navigate the development of the end stage renal disease phenotype. The first thing that we want to create is the clinical definition so that we actually know what uh, what sort of logic we want to implement and what types of patients we're actually looking for. And I used two sources when creating this definition, which is the guidelines for end-stage renal disease and also this very useful resource on PubMed that provides the description of diseases and how they're treated and what their prognosis is. And I want to fill the template for clinical definition. And for that, I went to the phenotype library GitHub to get this template and to fill it. And basically, when we talk about the end stage renal disease, it's the last terminal stage of chronic kidney disease, uh, which is impairment of kidney function present for more than three months. And this terminal stage usually requires dialysis or kidney transplant. And uh, the definition of it is observing EGFR or estimated glomerular filtration rate of less than 15 milliliter per minute per square meter. And when we look at those patients as they arrive at the clinic, they can present with all sorts of symptoms, uh, usually related to the fluid and salt retention, as well as electrolyte imbalance or other symptoms. And when we diagnose them, we, of course, want to assess the disorders that can lead to the end-stage renal disease, such as systemic disorders or diabetes. And we want to perform the diagnostic procedures, uh, which can vary. But again, uh, the key component here is estimating the EGFR. And if we see that EGFR is less than 15 minute, milliliter per minute uh, per square meter, then we want to ensure that this is not an acute state, but it is a chronic state. And when we go to treating those patients, it's basically the replacement therapy, which uh, ideally should be a kidney transplant, or if it's not feasible or while we are waiting for the transplant, it's a continuous multiple sessions of dialysis. And of course, uh, we want to treat uh, all of the complications and secondary diseases, uh, but still when we look at the prognosis, it's quite poor and only a small uh, proportion of patients survive five years. Now, when we think about strengtheners and disqualifiers, or the things that increase or decrease our confidence um, in, uh, in patient having this disorder, with disqualifiers, it's essentially a transitory decrease of EGFR, which is acute kidney failure or uh, chronic kidney disease of other stages. And then all of the other things that we covered, like complications and secondary diseases, if you observe them in the record, that will increase uh, the chances that this patient has the disease. So now when we have this clinical definition, we of course want to examine previous work. And I went to the phenotype library and I looked for the end-stage end renal disease. And in fact, there were a couple of phenotypes, but they were not validated. Uh, so maybe I want to use them as the starting point or just want to examine them. And of course, we want to look at the previous papers uh, on end-stage renal disease, and there are lots of them. For the purpose of this demo, I will not be reusing the existing definitions, but instead I will be developing that from scratch. And when we move uh, forward to phenotype development, there are essentially two pieces that uh, you want to consider, right? The first is creating your concept sets. And based on the clinical description that we saw, we may think about several building blocks for or several concept sets. The first concept set naturally is the condition or diagnosis codes for the end-stage renal disease. Then given uh, that we know that EGFR is the main measurement used to define this disease, we can think of the measurements being a building block. Then of course, it's dialysis and kidney transplant as procedures because we know that those patients should get uh, one of those. And it can be also devices related to these procedures or observations related to these procedures. And I will create um, 
the concept sets with you, but I also want to show you in this document what you would do afterwards with those concept sets. Of course, you will build some sort of logic to identify those patients in the data. And you can think about the simple logic where it's just diagnosis of end stage renal disease, or you can think of more complex phenotypes such as uh, diagnosis or kidney transplant or multiple dialysis events, or you can think about even more complex logic uh, such as developed by the other groups. And once you build uh, this logic, of course, you would do some sort of evaluation. Please come back next week for the evaluation of these phenotypes. And now I will move uh, with this um, overview of, um, of, of the steps. I will move to uh, actually creating those. And for that, I would naturally go to Atlas. Uh, and as I said, the first thing uh, we want to do is to create the concept sets. And we will start with the first, the obvious one, which is end stage renal disease diagnosis codes. So because I'm lazy, I will just type in end stage renal disease without spelling that out. And I will click on this green shopping card, which will in fact uh, initiate the recommender system or Phoebe that will suggest you uh, the codes for your concept set. Now, we land at the recommend section, right? But first we want to look at the concept set expression and what we Phoebe chose for us as a starting point. And we can see that the starting point is this broad term end stage renal disease, exactly what we want with all of the descendants. And the starting point was, select, was selected based uh, on the prevalence of the codes in our network uh, that we collected a while ago from 22 data sources across the network. So that looks like a good starting point. We want to name somehow our concept set, for example, end-stage renal disease SOS challenge, just so that we can save it. And now from that starting point, we want to go back to the recommend tab to examine all of the recommendations to see if there are other codes that can be recommended. What you see here is the set of recommendations. And on your left side over here, you see different types of recommendations, lexical, patient context, and ontology related recommendations. And they are ordered by default by this, the descendant record count. And this number represents the number of entries or records across the network that we collected. And that will allow you to review this list uh, based on how many records this code with the descendants, descendants will bring in. And of course, if you look at the top things, you see some of the things that we talked about in the clinical definition, uh, such as hypertensive disorder or diabetes or kidney disease, which are relevant to this concept set, but we don't want to include them because they're either just related or way too broad. And similarly, if we go down, renal failure syndrome is something relevant, but not precise enough. So we just keep going down, uh, trying to find something that would be more relevant. And as we scroll down, we in fact over here, um, go through all sorts of renal failures um, until we hit chronic kidney disease stage five. Now from the clinical definition, we know that CKD stage five is in fact the same thing as the end stage renal disease. So we want to include that. Now, if we didn't know that this concept um, is in the different branch in SNOMED hierarchy, we probably would have missed this record. And we know that this code with the descendants can bring us up to 35 million records. So we definitely want to include this in our concept set. And then there is chronic kidney disease stage five due to hypertension. That's also in stage renal disease plus hypertension. So we want that, obviously. And as we go down, we now all of a sudden can see all of this CPT4 codes that uh, are used for billing uh, that indicate that a patient had an eight stage renal disease and received some sort of services for which this code was used for billing. So that seems very relevant that that code indicates that patient had a disease plus got some sort of services. And this code, along with the descendants, accounts for 17 million records across the network. So we definitely want to include that. 
Um, and as we go down, essentially we see all sorts of CPT4 codes that look similar uh, to the one that we just included and just vary in terms of the details of the visits themselves and the types of services. Nevertheless, all of these codes um, have the mention of end-stage renal disease in them, so we want to include those. So we will just go down and include all of the CPT4 codes that we can find. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of them. Now you can see that the record counts goes down, they go down. So as you review those codes, you probably want to stop somewhere uh, just because at a given point, it doesn't really make sense uh, to include any more of the codes because they do not bring uh, a lot of patients in. We will just click on all of them, uh, but uh, in other uh, other circumstances, you probably will not include all of those simply because at this point it only brings 1,000 of records as opposed to millions of records, right? So we will stop here, but um, here because at this point it just uh, goes below 1,000. And we will click on the descendants and we will simply add that to the concept set. So now if we go to the concept set expression, we see that we added all of these codes with the descendants. And if we click on the recommend button now, we will see that now we have more entries, more recommendations, and they're different. And basically what we want to achieve here is iterating over the concept set again and again and again, up until you feel that you included all of the relevant terms. And you can see now that we in fact have this uh, broad snowman hierarchy codes, which just indicate any end-stage renal disease services. So we want to definitely include those as well. And again, for the purposes of this, um, oh, and this one as well. Uh, so for the purposes, for the purpose of this demo, we will just stop here. But uh, of course, and we sort of already know that this concept set is good enough based on our previous work, but in real life, you would iterate over the concept set again and again and again up until you feel that it's comprehensive. And we can uh, optimize it just to clean it up, just to clean it up. And we see that some of the codes are smooshed together. So we're just gonna overwrite this concept set for a cleaner, cleaner version of it. And pretty much this is the concept set for the end stage renal disease that we will work with. It has the condition codes. Um, and it also has some observation and procedure codes, and this is important to remember. And we will create the other concept sets using the similar approaches. Um, for the time's sake, I will show you uh, the template of the cohort definition that I created that has all of the uh, all of the concept sets already in it that I created before. But basically, of course, the principles behind it will be just the same. And we want to examine the concept sets just to show you what we have here. We have the end-stage renal disease um, concept set that we just created. We have the concept set for EGFR. And with EGFR, you can see that there are multiple different measurements, both from SNOMED and LOINC. And it's important to remember that whenever you create concept sets for measurements, uh, you need to include both the SNOMED codes and loin codes. And if you go, if we go to the renal transplant or dialysis concept sets that we created, we use just the same procedure as I showed you. Um, and you can see here that if we click on the included concepts, we have all sorts of the vocabularies here. We have the procedures from SNOMED, we have the procedures from CPT4. We have uh, the procedures from HICPIX, from ICD-10 PCS. And I think what is important here is because the procedures are slightly messy domain, whenever you create procedure-based uh, concept set, you want to make sure that you include all of the vocabularies that represent procedures, which is again, CPT-4 and SNOMED and ICD-10 PCS and HICPIX. So that's quite important to remember that the comprehensive concept set for procedures should include all of these vocabularies. And you can you can actually see that we have all of them here uh, for 
for the dialysis. And then having these building blocks, we can actually define the, the logic. And as we discussed, based on the clinical definition, the logic um, would include, can include multiple elements. The first obvious element is the diagnosis code of the end-stage renal disease itself. Now you see that we have here a condition occurrence of end-stage renal disease, an observation and procedure occurrence. That's because when we created the concept set, we actually saw that we have multiple domains in it. So it's important to create separate um, inclusion criteria for all of these domains so that we are not missing codes. Then another criteria can be renal transplant because we know that end-stage renal disease patients do need transplants. And that's again would be conditions related to renal transplants such as uh, kidney transplant present or observations or procedures. Now, another criteria can be measurement of EGFR because as we saw in clinical description, we want patients who had EGFR less than 15 um, over a prolonged period of time. So we would create uh, the inclusion criteria and we would specify the values from one to 15. And here from uh, the point, the lower point one was specifically selected to exclude all sorts of random entries with zeros. And you would specify the units. Sometimes we know it's challenging. Here we know it's simpler because uh, the unit is clearly defined to be this milliliter per minute per 1.73 square meter. So we want to add those units to make sure that we are capturing the right data. And that would be the first measurement, but because we know from the clinical description that chronic kidney disease has to be present for more than three months, we want to require those patients to have another measurement of a GFR uh, at least 90 days apart to ensure that this is a chronic condition and not an acute condition. And similarly, with dialysis, dialysis can also be used for both chronic kidney disease and acute kidney disease. So we mimic the same uh, outline here where, where we require a dialysis and then another dialysis at least 90 days apart to ensure that people had multiple um, events of dialysis and not just one time thing. And this is the copy of the same criteria just for the procedures because dialysis has both procedures and observations um, in the concept set. And we will be looking for the earliest event per person. We know that it's a chronic condition. So whenever a patient has end stage renal disease, this is for the whole lifetime. And basically you can see here that the logic is not that complex, but it is sort of complex. We have um, diagnosis, we have renal transplant, we have EGFR, we have dialysis. You can think of other um, logic that is even more complex. But of course, the real question here is, can we just go with simple diagnosis of end-stage renal disease and nothing else? Would that phenotype be just as good as this phenotype that has multiple building blocks? And we essentially can, not this text, we can um, easily test that by creating a copy of this core definition, and we would name it reference to, where we would simply keep the end-stage renal disease codes and we will remove all of the other criteria, transplant, EGFR, dialysis, everything else. We will just skip a simple clean definition based on the condition codes. And what we will naturally want to do is to compare the performance of these two phenotypes, uh, the more complex one and the simpler one, and we will probably want to look at how this phenotype performs or how those patients look like. And this is something we will touch on, uh, on the next call where we would actually examine the phenotypes and we will see if the simple diagnosis-based phenotype uh, is just as good enough uh, as the other more complex phenotypes. So just to reiterate, we created uh, here four building blocks and we arranged them in two different definitions, one more complex one, another a simpler one, and we will see how they perform and whether we need to choose 
a more complex one. 